Hello everybody, welcome to Photo Justice Photo Moment. This is a redo because this morning we did it and it was okay, but not everything worked exactly the way I intended or hoped. And uh oh, everything just broke. Did it break? No, it didn't break. It's a big old breaking thing over here. Anyway, so um, yeah, so we're redoing it because <laughs> I figured this out. So the whole thing was uh, a viewer had written in asking, how to capture the iPhone screen and how to shoot tethered from the iPhone. Now we covered the how to shoot or how to capture the iPhone screen yesterday. We talked about how to capture it when you're out in the field and how to capture it locally on your computer. So that is available. You can see that on the YouTube channel. We'll stick a link to that guy somewhere here and you'll be able to watch that. But today is the part two of this question, which is how do I shoot tethered? Okay, well, first of all, what is shooting tethered in case you're not familiar with this concept? Tethered shooting is typically done in the studio and usually with really big cameras, like a medium format camera. And the idea is that when you shoot a picture, instead of having to then pull out the card, stick that in your computer to download the files, you are tethered, meaning you have a cable between your um, your camera and your computer, and every shot that you make automatically shows up on the computer. So it's kind of like an auto import while you shoot. There's actually wireless tethering as well on for some cameras and some setups, which is pretty cool. But for the most part, usually you do it wired. One of the reasons you do it wired is speed. Well, a couple of reasons would be speed and also reliability. Uh, if you're shooting tethered, odds are you're doing it because you've got a client looking over your shoulder who's viewing the images, or you're in a very rapid paced environment where you just need to get these shots out very quickly for whatever reason. Lots of different reasons to do it, but uh, usually you're gonna go wired, usually in the studio. All that aside, a viewer asked how to do it with the iPhone. And I thought, well, who doesn't like a challenge? And uh, if you saw this morning's fabulous video, then you know a challenge it was. So here's what uh, here's what we've determined. First of all, the kind of software you'd usually use for tethering would be something like Lightroom or Capture One. Neither one of those will see the iPhone as a camera when it's plugged in. So you can't shoot tethered just using that software like you normally would. So bummer there, but say la vie. So we needed to come up with a new way to do it. Now you have, when you plug in your iPhone, there's lots of different things you can do to import. You can use photos, you can use Lightroom, you can use just about anything. Uh, but there's also this app called Image Capture that is built into every Mac. And so that is going to be the basis of what we're going to use. So let's start by taking a quick look at Image Capture. And what I had to do, let me kind of do this real quick. Um, what I had to do to make this work properly was I had to clear everything off of my iPhone. Now this is this is a demo phone. Now if you're seriously shooting tethered, um, this is the kind of thing you might need to do. <laughs> I don't know what but you, you might. Um, or you'll see here that we're gonna have to click the import all button to make this work in any kind of an automated fashion, which means even if you don't clear off your phone, you at least need to have downloaded everything from it first. So when you click import all, it only downloads the newest photos, which is kind of the, the crux of how this whole thing comes together. So let's go back to the Mac here and take a look. So we've got up here, image capture, and you see it's connected to my iPhone and there's currently nothing on the camera roll at all. Now, when I first plug this in, uh, let's see here, I'm going to disconnect, let's do it like this. Let me go back to this view real quick. I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect it and so it disappears from there. I will take out my iPhone and just take a picture of my coffee cup here. Uh, it, was set to HDR, so it actually took two pictures. And so now when I plug in the iPhone and unlock it, we should see it shows up there. It says, please unlock iPhone. There we go, it's unlocked. And now you see the two pictures that I just shot, the HDR and the original one. Okay, so that's what would normally happen. So then I can just click on import all, or I could click on an individual one of these and click import and copy that in and take over from there. So first of all, if you just click on import if you click on just the one import, it's only going to import what's selected, which would mean that you would have to select the photo that you wanted to import before it would import. So that would kind of negate the whole automated tethered shooting thing. The idea behind shooting tethered is you take a picture and it just shows up. That it should be totally hands off. That's the idea. So we need to be able to click the import all. The thing is, there's no way to automatically click the import all. Or is there? I found a way. Okay, but we're gonna save that for last because that is the crux of making the whole thing automated. We'll come to that. So first off, we need we click on import all to just bring in the pictures. Okay, so where are they gonna go? Those can go anywhere. In this case, we have, uh, I've set up a folder called import tethered. So this is just on the desktop. So I just went to other, went to the desktop. I created a folder there called import tethered, or iPhone tethered, sorry, and chose that. And that is here open. So there's that same, 
uh, what do you call it? Same folder. So there's the desktop, local desktop, iPhone tethered. Okay. So when I import these, they're going to automatically go into this folder. Now I've got Lightroom running over here as well. And what Lightroom allows you to do is create a watch folder. And a watch folder in Lightroom is basically it's looking at a folder anywhere in your system. And whenever anything shows up in there, it imports it into Lightroom and moves it somewhere else. Neat feature. And that's how we're going to automatically import from this folder on the desktop that we've created into Lightroom. So let's see how to set that guy up. So in Lightroom, under the file menu, you have auto import. And I've already got it enabled, but we'll go through the whole, whole process. You choose the auto import settings. And by default, this will be turned off, enable auto import. So you can turn that on. And then you have to tell it where it's watching, so where the photos are coming from, and a destination where they're going to. So watch folder, you just click on choose and choose that same iPhone tethered photo. So there, there it is, iPhone tethered on the desktop. OK, so I've chosen that. And then the destination, where are they going to go to? You need to move them somewhere else so that Lightroom doesn't continuously import the same photo again. And this is, you don't really have a choice in the matter. This is something you have to choose. And so I chose in the pictures folder, I created a photo, a folder called iPhone auto imported. And I chose that. And then Lightroom is going to automatically create a subfolder, which you can call whatever you want. So I just left it at the default, auto imported photos. That is now here. I've got that window open here just so that we can see what's happening as this goes. Then you have other optional options. File naming, you can choose to name whatever you want. I went ahead and gave it a custom name with a sequence, and I called it My Big Shoot. And we're going to start this number at 1. And then you can choose develop settings. You could have it apply a preset, black and white preset, color preset, whatever you like. You could have your metadata applied. So I've chosen my Photo Joseph preset. You can put in keywords. I've put in demo. Let's do iPhone. Let's, I, I, let's try that again. iPhone tether. OK, I have no idea why it's not typing. I wonder, am I? No, I'm not. I don't know why it's just misbehaving. I, I can't type the letter I. Oh, I know why this is. OK, here, turn away. I got to turn something off that I had to turn on, that I have to turn on to make this work. I forgot to disable this. OK, there we go. Now I can type, I think. iPhone, yep, now I can type. OK, so back to this. So I'm going to type in iPhone tethered. OK, so there's my keywords. And a preview, you can choose a preview if you want to, whatever you want. OK, that's all fine. Enable auto import is on. Click OK, and you're ready to go. If you want to double check it under the file menu, under auto import, make sure that this has been enabled. You can turn it off at any time. Just turn that off. And it keeps all your settings. It just toggles that auto import on and off. So I want that on, of course. All right, so let's, let's now test this out. So right now, so far, we have this set up so that we've got our iPhone is connected. When I shoot a new picture, we see that picture show up immediately in here. Um, and let's, we'll just verify that and then show that to you. Let's go in here, select this. I'm going to open up the iPhone, turn on the camera, and I'll take a picture. And immediately it shows up there. Now, if you saw the previous failed demo, one of the problems we were having was that they weren't showing up immediately in there. And I should say this too, that I think a big problem that I had before was that I had the iCloud photo storage thing turned on, and then I turned it off. And I couldn't, it, it just wasn't syncing happily, it wasn't syncing properly. So I took my demo phone and I just cleared everything off of it, made sure there's no pictures on there at all. iCloud is turned off and we're good to go. Now, whether this would continue to work with iCloud enabled or not, if you have 10,000 pictures on your phone or not, a little bit questionable. And from the earlier things that we saw, it really wasn't working well, but your mileage may vary. Obviously, you can give it a try. You got nothing to lose. But for now, I'm working with a basically totally clean iPhone. So if that's what it takes to make this work and this is important to you, then maybe it's worth going that way. Anyway, so as you saw here, I take a picture, take another, take another picture, and as soon as I take it, it shows up in there. OK, so now we're all set up, right? I've got a picture on the iPhone, and I'm going to click on the Import All button. That is going to import all four of these into this iPhone tethered folder. Uh, I also, I have it set to delete after import, totally unnecessary, but I'm just going to do it just to keep this clean and make the demo nice and easy to see. So the pictures are going to show up here on iPhone tethered, and then Lightroom is going to pick them up and start importing them into Lightroom, and you're going to see them move into the auto imported photos. All right, so here we go. One button click, import all. All four of them are imported. They've been deleted from the phone, and there they are showing up in Lightroom. Super. Okay, so that's, that's all there is to that. Now I'll go and take another one. Let's just take one more photo. Uh, let's turn this thing around here and turn the camera around and do a lovely selfie. Hello. 
and that shows up instantly. And I click on import all. I think it moves into the iPhone tethered folder, moves into Lightroom, and away we go. Okay, so this is interesting. Right now we're getting somewhere. The next step is, of course, to automate it. So how are we going to automate this process? This is where things get really a bit tricky. Now, I started digging through uh, AppleScript and through Automator. I opened image capture in the AppleScript um, library. You can see all, all terms, all AppleScript library, whatever they're called, things that you can automate. There wasn't a library for image capture, so that's out. Uh, Automator, it has various import into things, but no import from image capture or import from iPhone. So the whole automatic import through scripting didn't seem like it was going to work. So then I thought, okay, um, well, there's Hazel, which is another automated app. I dug into that. That didn't seem to have anything that would work. And then I thought, all I really need is something to click that import all button repeatedly. Just, just like you need a person to sit there and go, click, click, click. Obviously, I don't want a person for that. So how can you automate that? So I started Googling around automatically click buttons on a Mac. And I found a few apps that will do it, some um, interesting third-party apps, freeware, shareware, variety of things. And then I came across a video on YouTube, which I will link to, even though I'm going to tell you now the video is a little bit painful to watch. But uh, I found a video on YouTube that told me how to do this with AppleScript. And that is the key because Apple Script is free. It's included in the Mac. All you need is a itty bitty little code, which I will also include in the notes below and or above, depending on where you're watching this, we'll include those notes. And um, yeah, and then it works. So all the script is going to do is it's it's going to click the button every X number of seconds. And like two seconds is great. So you just tell it to click the button every two seconds. All you have to do is launch the script and put the mouse over that button and away it goes. I see there's a few folks watching live right now. If you're watching live, please do feel free to shout out some questions or just say hi in the comments. We always love to see that. Okay, so let's take a look at, uh, for a while here, I'll show you the video. I mean, we're not gonna actually watch the video, but here it is on YouTube. Uh, it's called Mac Auto Clicker Free and Easy, no downloads. It's obviously gotten quite a few views at 117,000 views. So, uh, you know, it did it. And here's the script that we need. And again, I will put this in the notes as well. So we're gonna grab this guy. I'm gonna copy this, copy this uh, uh, code there. All right, let me rearrange some windows here. So let's go back to my desktop here. We're gonna need accessibility and we're gonna need script editor. So you launch script editor script editor launch that and here we're gonna i'm gonna create a whole new one let's just get rid of this guy that i created earlier entirely so that we are literally literally not literally we are honestly starting from scratch remove that from the dock okay so script editor script editor command n to create a new one i'm going to paste this code in as you can see the code is on idle tell application system events key code 87 key code 87 must be the click and then end tell, and that's it. And then it just return two, and it's two or five or however many seconds you want, and that is seconds. So two works. You can compile that, click the little uh, hammer icon there to compile it. All looks good and happy. And now I'm gonna save this, and this is part of the key here. You gotta save it in the pr proper format. We're gonna call it auto clicker. I'm gonna put it on the desktop. You can put it anywhere. You gotta set it to an application, and you've gotta tell it to stay open after it runs. This allows it to continue to run over and over again. Save that, and it creates the app on the desktop. Now, before this app will actually start clicking on the uh, click, click, clicking the mouse, you have to go into your system preferences. So here's our system preferences. Of course, you access that from the Apple menu, system preferences. And then you go into accessibility, which is down here. And then under accessibility, scroll down until you find the mouse and trackpad settings. And it's this guy right here, enable mouse keys. Now that was the problem that I had when I first was trying to type in the iPhone thing, because once you enable mouse keys, the whole point of enabling mouse keys is it's for those who don't have the ability to move the mouse or have a hard time moving the mouse. You can use keys on the keyboard to navigate the mouse around. One of those keys is of course, click, and that's what the Apple script is doing. So once you enable it, you'll have a hard time typing on the screen, on the computer. So this is the kind of thing that you will either want to keep handy so that you can get back to it to turn it off. Or if you look at the options in here, you'll see that there is an option to press the option key five times to toggle mouse keys. So that's kind of nice. And there's a little sound effect that goes with it. Um, I'm just going to, uh, yeah, I'll leave that on, sure. 
a little sound effect to go with it. I'm going to hit the option. You're not going to hear it because um, it's not wired that way, but it will. I hit it five times. You look at that. It pops up. It says mouse keys is on. And you can see that that enabled. If I hit it again, mouse keys is off and that's disabled. So that's actually quite handy to do it that way because now you know you have a visual reference that that is on. So now that that is on, again, I'm going to have a hard time using the keyboard, but that's okay. All I'm going to have to do is launch this auto clicker. So I'm going to go ahead and put it in the dock. You can still use the mouse in the trackpad. Now I'm going to put that in the dock. And once I launch that, every two seconds, it's going to click. So let's go ahead and get back to my setup in here. And what I'll eventually be doing is positioning the mouse over the import all button. So let's go ahead and enable this guy. And then I'll just uh, and put the mouse over there. And it is now clicking. Now, nothing's happening yet because there's, there's nothing to click. But I'll now go ahead and take my first picture and fire up the camera again. And this, we don't want to see another. Oh, there we go. It's going to be another selfie to click that. It shows up. You see the import all buttons available. And look, it clicked. Did you see that? It clicked. <laughs> it's totally automated now. So I'm going to keep taking pictures. We're just going to take another picture and another one, or another one, or another one, or another one, or another one, and another one. <laughs> and I crashed it. All right. So maybe you got to not get quite so excited with it. Let's reopen that. Let's try that again. Maybe not clicking. Maybe not putting so many in there at once. And I mean, let's be honest, if you're shooting with the iPhone, you're probably going to be a little bit more slow about things. That's working better. There we go. And it's working. Look at that. Just don't get too excited and it won't crash. <laughs> and those are all automatically importing into Lightroom. Isn't that cool? Come on, admit it. That's cool. I mean, I don't know how useful it is, <laughs> but it's cool. So you can do it. So there you go. That's how you can shoot tethered with the iPhone. We'll put all the, the links to the script and the script itself that you need into the description so that you can go, uh, you can copy that, paste it in, and, and off you go if this is the kind of thing you really want to do. Um, oh, and then, of course, when you're done, let's, let's go back to this because right now it's still clicking, right? If I move my mouse over this picture, hands off the keyboard, boom, it's clicking, right? Move my mouse here, hands off the keyboard, it's clicking. So we got to make sure that we turn this thing off. So I'm going to quickly right click on there and quit. Nope. See this, you got a little, little, little you got to be quick. Auto click. <laughs> Auto quit. Dang it. Come here. You quit. God. Okay. So maybe, maybe setting like three seconds would be better. Whew, there. Got it. So now that's quit. And don't forget option key five times to turn mouse keys off so that your mouse goes back to normal. That's it. I think it's cool. I don't know about you. Not the most useful thing in the world, but, uh, but what the heck? If you want to do it, you can do it. All right, guys, that's it. I'm out of here. That was today's photo moment. Uh, tomorrow's photo moment, I am going to, uh, I'm going to be showing you a couple of videos that I created a while ago. You may recall that I had done a look at the studio setup. This is all set up for a client shoot several weeks ago, maybe even a month ago. And I said the video would be out next week. For whatever reason, the video is delayed, but it was just released this morning. So tomorrow I am going to show you those videos. There were two of them and uh, talk about a little bit more of a behind the scenes and what went into those. All right. See you guys next time. Bye-bye.